Alrighty, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? Today we're going to be talking about Resto Druid. We're going to be going over the best things for PvP, PvE. We're going to be going over the best runes, talents, rotations, your best pre-biz gear, your best gear from the Sunken Temple raid. And without further ado, let's get straight into it here. First up, we have PvP. First things first, we're going to talk about your gear. If you get 100 to 0 in 5 seconds and you're not able to heal your team, well, you're kind of doing them a little bit of a disservice. You need to stay alive as much much as possible so that way you can actually stay in the fight so you're gonna prioritize really stam then intellect and then everything else kind of afterwards so the best overall sets to have here are just gonna be from the emerald warden so you're actually gonna have three pieces of the healing gear and three pieces of the boomy gear this is because each set of three gives you a 10 stamina boost so that's an extra free 20 stam on top of that you definitely want to go ahead and have your ring one of the rings from the no more quest line that's gonna give you a another pretty sick ring right there and then also make sure that you get the neck as well as the back and the wrists from the pvp vendor you only need to be rank 4 pvp now your talents are going to look something like this if you want to just keep it as simple as possible so you're going to go ahead and put 10 points into balance so five into improved wrath that's just the bread and butter of your dps whenever you can chill out some dps then you're actually gonna go into nature's grasp. But that's because every time an enemy tries to attack you, that's gonna give you as much of breathing room as possible to just kind of run around in your evlofluorescence. Then you're gonna go for just these standard 31 points here into resto. You're gonna put five points into improved mark of the wild, five points into your healing touch. You're actually gonna do five points here into nature's focus. You will not be casting healing touch or regrowth really very much in PVP, but when you have to, so it's got to count next you're going to go tranquil spirit just because 10 percent less cost on mana is very appreciated you're actually going to do three points here into improve rejuve that is actually because your evlofluorescence or your swift men procs off of your rejuve so you want to be able to get as much healing out of that as possible so you're going to be healing for about 900 on an instant cast from there and then you're going to have your gift to the nature just to get an extra 10% of healing out. Now, if you wanna try a slight variation of that, that's fine, I have another one right here. Your resto part is gonna be the exact same, nothing changes much on that. However, in balance, you are actually gonna be doing improved entangling roots. This is just to be able to cast entangling roots on someone else and be able to get them out as fast as possible away from you. And then you're gonna actually put two points into natural shapeshifter because it reduces mana cost of shapeshifting by 20%. Now, for your runes here, you're actually going to go for improved bark skin. Your chest is going to just be Fury of the Storm Rage. Your wrist is going to be Evlofluorescence. Your hands are going to be Wild Growth. Your waist, it doesn't really matter too much here. Eclipse isn't really amazing, and Nourish is way too mana costly. It's about 26% of your overall mana pool. So, it's a great heal, but it kind of sucks just for your ability to keep the entire group up. Then for your legs, you actually have a choice here. You can either go Life Bloom if you want to be really focused on healing, or you can go Star Surge if you want to get a little bit of damage out. And then for your feet, you're actually going to put on Survival Instincts. Now, the reason that you're going to put Survival Instincts on here is because it's going to grant you 30% of your maximum health for 20 seconds. So that's going to just be very easy. So let's say you're getting targeted heavily because they can see that you're healing. You're going to go into Bear Form. You're going to cast Survival Instincts, and then you are going to cast Frenzied Regeneration and that should keep you up along with having hots on yourself now in terms of your best rotation or scenario so you want to kind of stay back a little bit from the melee in your pvp group and if you're just pvping by yourself well that's a totally different scenario in itself so now when you are in a group as a resto you kind of want to go more on the melee heavy side of cleaves so you want to go on like a warrior paladin rogue and your fifth is going to be a feral just to enhance them now all of that all together is going to be pretty useful for you because you can actually just cast your rejuve and then your swift mend on the main target that is taking damage then all of the melee in the group are going to start being healed 
gold, then you wanna throw out some life blooms on everyone. The reason being, it's so cheap and it's very, very cost effective. So you can get like a 450 heal over, you know, seven seconds is what it takes to proc on it, but it costs you 150 mana and the other 75 will be returned to you after seven seconds. So it's a very, very useful heal. And the fact that you won't go oom and it is pretty useful. Now you don't always wanna be casting wild growth. Now the reason you don't always wanna cast wild growth is because it is very, very mana costly. Now, obviously, if your group is taking a lot of damage, then at that point, you do want to be casting it. You want to focus on things that cost you the least amount of mana first. So you're going to throw on Rejuve on the main target. Then you're going to Swift Mend for the Elephorescence proc. Then at that point, you can throw Life Bloom on the targets that are going to be taking a lot of damage. Or you can throw Life Bloom on before the fight even starts, if you can actually predict that. That's even better. Now, I normally like to go for a two stack on Life Bloom just because it does about a thousand healing. So that's generally a third or a half of most people's health. If it crits, it's like 15 or 1600. You can go for the three stack on a major target that's being, you know, burst down. However, you don't got to worry too much about it. Just kind of get your overall feel for it and go from there. Now, if you are going against a heavy AoE comp, you are going to want to do the exact same thing. You're going to throw out your Rejuve, then your Swift men get the proc on evlofluorescence have them stand in it and at that point you are also going to want to go ahead and stand in it don't forget about that and you are going to then cast wild growth then you're going to go ahead and cast life bloom on whoever needs it now if you start getting targeted yourself go into bear form if you're at like half health or whatnot go ahead and pop your survival instinct and try to just kite them around just kind of run around in a circle in your evlofluorescence that will generally keep them off of you as much as possible then just cast life bloom rejuve wild growth etc until you're basically out of mana and die or until the enemy's dead and at that point drink and that's pretty much all you need to know about pvp all right next we're going to move on to pve and we're going to start it out with gear i'm going to be including every single slot piece and the best in slot as well as alternatives so if you don't want to farm something for hours and hours you don't have to so let's get straight into the gear here now the two helmet pieces that we're going to start out here are going to be the craft pieces from Nomer. It's going to be the Neuralinked Arcanofilament Monocle or the Neuroconductive Chandler's Hood. These are going to be pretty much your best in slot, probably until 60, honestly. I personally prefer to go with the Neuralinked just because I felt like it simmed better and it felt better in my hands than the Conductive Chandler's Hood did, but you can really play around with that however you like. Some good alternatives for that are the Soothsayer's Headdress. This is a 3% drop chance from a boss in Maradon. Next, we have the Knight Lieutenant's Restored Leather Helm. This is from getting rank 7 in PvP. Then we have the Crown of the Dreamweaver. This is from the Wild Offerings farm. You can probably do this in about 2-3 hours. Then we have the Papal Fez. This is from a random drop in Oldaman. And the last option, Emerald Dreamkeeper Helm, the healing one specifically. Now for your neck pieces here, the best one by far is going to be the Pendant of Homecoming. It is a drop from Nomer. And the other two, one is going to be the Piston Pendant, also drop from Nomer, with a little bit of a better drop chance. And the next one is the Tribune Amulet, which is a drop from High Inquisitor White Mane from Scarlet Monastery. Your best in slot shoulder piece is going to be the Mantle of Lost Hope. It is a pretty low drop chance from one of the first bosses in BRD. Then you have the Knight Lieutenant's Restored Leather Spalders. This requires rank 7 in PvP. Then you have the Kentic Amos, which is another farm in BRD. Then you have the Rock Rip Mantle, which is a 7% drop chance from Rock Rip from Maradon. And then if you don't want to farm any of those, you can just get the Emerald Dreamkeeper Shoulders. And those should all hold you over until you run the ST raid long enough to get your crafted shoulders. Now, when you are getting your crafted shoulders, you can either go for the shoulder pads of Obsession, which are the leatherworking ones, which do actually have a slight edge over the cloth healing ones. They're almost exactly identical items, except the cloth one gives you stamina, whereas the leather one does not. And there is an extra nine healing power on the leather ones, so that's a tiny little boost for that as well. Moving on to your cloak or cape spot, we actually only have two options here. The first, which is going to be the best, is the Cloak of Invention that is going to drop from Nomer. And the next one is the 
Cape of Hemostasis, which is farmed from the STV Blood Moon event. It doesn't require that much. I think it's like three or four silver coins, so you just have to run it like three, four times, and you should be done with that grind as well. Now, your best in slot chest piece is going to be the Hyperconductive Shimmer Shirt, which is a set piece from Nomer. You can actually just get the three set piece from Nomer, and you can just keep that as your feet, chest, and legs. If you don't want to do that, you, that's totally fine. You can also get the irradiated set as well from Nomer, or if you are rank 6, you can get the Knight's Restored Leather Jerkin. If you don't want to PDP either, you can get the Emerald Dreamkeeper chest, and if you don't want to do that either, then you can always opt in for the crafted chest, the Dreamweave vest as well. Your best wrists for the entire phase are actually going to be the Dryad's wrist bindings. They are gotten from getting exalted to Warsong Gulch, so it is quite a grind. However, it could be worth it if you are interested in PvPing. The next best one is going to be the Tinker's wrist wraps, which is gotten from a drop in Nomergon. Then you have the Manacle cuffs, which is actually from a quest line from doing BRD. It's called the Love Potion. And the last one is the Aristocratic cuffs which is from a random drop in brd gloves we have the best slot is going to go to the sergeant majors restored leather gloves this is however rank six for pvp another good alternative for that is actually the green leaf hand wraps if you are horde if you are not horde you can always get the emerald dream keeper gloves and if you don't want that either you can always get the ogre seer fists which are farmed from brd for your belt, your best in slot is going to be the Mechmender's Sash. That is a drop from Nomer. Then you have the Cord of the Untamed, which you need 15 wild offerings for. After that, you have the Death Mage Sash, which is from RFD from the last boss. And then if you can't get any of those three, then you can always go for an Ornate Girdle. It should be selling for 5 to 10 gold on the auction house. Your best in slot legs are going to be the Senior Designer's Pantaloons from BRD. It is a little bit of a pain in the butt to get these, but they are definitely worth it. After that, you have the Knight's Restored Leg Leggings. These are from rank 7 in PvP. Then you have the Hyperconductive Pantaloons, which are set piece drops from Nomer. And then you have the Emerald Dreamkeeper Pants. Your best in slot boots are going to be the Sergeant Major's Restored Leather Boots. These are gotten from getting to rank 5 in PvP. Your next ones are going to be the Emerald Dreamkeeper Boots the healing ones. Then you have the hyperconductive sandals from Nomergon. Now your best two rings are going to be the hypercharged gear of conflagration, which is from the last boss in Nomer, and the cyclopean band, which is a rare drop from BRD. Some other alternatives are going to be the lore keeper's ring, which requires honored with the warsong gulch, and the El Executioner Hexa, which is another drop from Nomergon. And the last one that I'm going to mention here that I don't expect anyone to farm is a Rune Ring of Intellect, which is going to be your best by far, except it is a random drop from random mobs in Zulfarak. You will see this ring, not of the intellect, you just see the ring every 150 runs, give or take. So it's definitely not worth farming at all, but you can go right ahead if you want. For your trinkets, you are going to need the Talisman of the Corrupted Grove, first and foremost. That is from the STV event. You need 15 silver coins. For the next trinket, you can either get the Miniaturized Combustion Chamber, which is a dropped from Nomer, or you can swap that with the Niodine Pill Bottle, which is also a drop from Nomer. And lastly, we have your weapon. You can either get the Glimmering Gizmo Blade, paired with the 960 Repair Manual, and some alternatives for that are going to be the gear mender's grace or the enthralled sphere which is dropped from brd now if none of those drop for you or none of those combinations drop for you just get the defibrillating staff also drop from nomer Alrighty, moving on from that we have your talents so it's going to be pretty similar to pvp but we're just going to touch on that very fast again here now you're going to put five points into improved mark the wild two points into nature's focus five points into improved healing touch three into reflection one into insect swarm five into tranquil spirit 
three into rejuvenation, five into gift of nature, one into nature swiftness, and one into swift men. The last 10 points you're going to dump into improved wrath, and you're going to put another five into improved moanfire. Now, as for your runes, on your head, you're going to use improved bark skin. On your chest, you're going to use fear of the storm rage. On your wrist, you're going to use evolescence, hands, wild growth, waist, eclipse, legs, life bloom, and feet, dream state. Alrighty, and lastly, we have your rotation. So what you want to do is you want to reapply two stacks of life bloom onto the tank, then take a quick drink just so that you are fully topped up. Then two, three seconds after the fight starts, the life bloom should proc. You want to then do rejuve. Then when the tank dips down on their health a little bit, you want to use swift men because it procs everfluorescence, but it also does an instant eight to 900 healing. Then you're going to reapply Rejuve, put on two more stacks of Life Bloom. At that point, if the raid is taking raid-wide damage, you want to use Wild Growth on the group that's in the worst shape. Maybe try to coordinate with the other healers there just to be fully coordinated with them and don't waste pretty wide heals on the same group. Next then, you're going to be using Rejuve again on the tank or on the group that is taking the most damage. If it's a melee group, it's even better. You can pop up Fluorescence on them and they can, you know, kind of heal up a little bit better themselves. Themselves. If not, wait for wild growth cooldown to be on use. And you want to just kind of rinse and repeat that over and over and over. Always try to keep two stacks of life bloom on the tank. My general rule of thumb on using wild growth is if two or more party members are at 50% health, I want to use wild growth on that group. If there are three party members that have like a third off of their health, I want to use wild growth. And if a melee group specifically is kind of starting to take some damage, then at that point, I want to use Evolfluorescence proc on them. Besides that, I'll just throw out, you know, one or two stacks of life bloom if one or two people are taking damage randomly in some parties. And that's pretty much all I got. Thanks so much for sticking with me here. Hope you learned something new. If you liked it, please leave a comment and like the video and subscribe. Besides that, peace out for now.